Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. For anyone who's new to this channel, this is where we talk about anything AI. So we talk about careers, we talk about internships, we talk about job search, um, we talk about code, uh, computers, uh, you name it and you have it. Uh, so today's session is actually pretty close to my heart because going forward, uh, I actually will be covering some of the research papers that I have been fortunate to be a part of and to have gotten access this year yes 2020 so I will be talking about very recent research papers that uh, have gotten accepted I will be covering them uh, in the in the initial part of, of the videos again the explanation is going to be very simple uh, I mean I, I'm some of them may have code me some of them may not have code associated with them so I'm gonna be putting all of that out and in the end I'm also gonna be supplementing that with some resources as to um, you know people who want to get into the to the domain uh, but they are new to it they want to you know try their hands-on uh, some of the ex hands-on exercises so resources I will be putting the end i'm hoping this is going to help anyone who is trying to get uh, some new research ideas into the image processing deep learning machine learning and computer vision areas um, so this is meant to help the community uh, so in case you like these kind of videos please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so today's paper is called fussy net or uh, the full form of, of the paper it's fusion of spatio-temporal skeletons for intention prediction network and what it does is actually it so this is looking at the the world through uh, an autonomous driven car's eyes and what happens is it it, it uses uh, the camera video sequences in order to predict if uh, a pedestrian is going to be a threat to the car or not are they going to jump in front of the car or not so in some cases are they going to cross the street but is is that a threat to the car or not and not just that we take it a, a, a you know step further we do prediction as to what's going to happen up until half a second in advance if this person could pose a threat half a second in advance so this gives enough time uh, you know for the for the car to react uh, in order to slow down or in order to you know think of other maneuvers that is possible in, in order to you know protect uh, the, the pedestrian so it's pretty interesting work uh, this is very close to my heart because um, the project that culminated to this paper it's actually an international uh, team of students so we had two team of students one from Chalmers University in Sweden and then one we had from UC Berkeley and the team worked together from January through May and they finished up in, in submitting this paper along with there is code and there is a very well uh, you know cataloged website that goes with it that explains every single process that I will be covering in this video so I think it's very well done work and it would really benefit the community to you know continue this work going forward as well so let's get straight to it all right so if you go to Google and just type F U S S I N E T fussy net you will see that this is the paper on archives and again on the IEEE version will be out uh, pretty shortly this has been accepted at IEEE SLOMAR SSC system signals and computers and uh, it, it's actually presented just today um, so if you just hit PDF that's where you will get the PDF of the of the paper and this is the one that I was talking about so let's uh, try to understand what the the what we are trying to do the why we are trying to do this and then let's understand the how and understand the, the code that uh, you know we have uh, given out so the why is is pretty clear uh, we want to know the intention of, of pedestrians so that uh, the, the car uh, can actually make uh, useful judgments as to you know who is, is going to be a threat to the vehicle in advance so this is the website and uh, this is where we have the, the four models that we, are, we talk about in the paper, all of them described. We start from the, the complete field of view image. So all the, the you know, complete images by, that are captured at 30 frames per second by uh, you know, the, an automotive grade camera. And then first the, the first job is always to detect the object. So we use the YOLO V3. And the YOLO V3 is pretty efficient in putting bounding boxes. Uh, so YOLO V3, again, we do the implementation around TensorFlow. Everything is so that it can be replicated in 
an autonomous drive uh, sort of a situation. Then these bounding blocks are placed on every single frame and after that we learn we, we run a real-time tracker and uh, the real-time tracker just gives bounding box you know around uh, corresponding to each and every pedestrian it just tracks them over over different frames and finally we just use a classifier so let's look at some of the end-to-end -end, uh, you know solutions and then we will break it down into each and every individual blocks and finally we will be reviewing some of the results so let's look at an, an, an instance here uh, and let me blow this up so you see this is the example so first step is putting uh, object detection right so you get these bounding box around the people but then you see these these numbers 42 43 46 48 these are actually the outcome of the real-time tracker so so that the bounding box is put around each and every uh, you know pedestrians in subsequent frames they are associated with a particular pedestrian all right so that's the outcome of a real-time tracker however real-time tracking system is not always a hundred percent efficient because what happens is if there are um, if there is a, an occlusion then it, it becomes really hard to, to track the system so let me show you a couple of other examples in order to to really motivate so this one was an example of a low standing sun and here you see um, here again this is the output of, of the tracking system so whenever the the boxes are red that means they are uh, you know threat to the car that means they can jump in front of the car so the car should slow down for them and otherwise uh, you know of course uh, you, you just keep going all right um, and let me give you one last example and this will will show you the the, the, the limitations of, uh, of of the you know proposed system is if there are too many um, pedestrians to track um, you see uh, this this particular person starts with 192 but as soon as this uh, the, you know it, it has been intersected by another one towards the end you'll see that the number changes to 225 that's because um, this this uh, this one pedestrian uh, serves as an occlusion for for one 92 and the system doesn't really know how to recover that back so then 225 becomes the new identifier corresponding to that particular um, uh, you know passenger or, or pedestrian and again all of these cases are, are, are true for every one of, of, of these so every single uh, at the end of it so every single object which has been tracked is now classified are they going to be a threat to the car or not so here uh, one important aspect uh, you might want to see is some of the, the the pedestrians who are further away you will see sometimes they become red and they become red only if they are coming within the path of the car so even you know if, if the car could have taken a right turn then uh, the, the pedestrians who would have uh, you know uh, been been a threat so uh, the, the system actually analyzes potential threats with regards to not just the current position but also some of the maneuvers which is possible for the car to take so if somebody is is you know crossing the 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 the, the, the road in in a direction that uh, a car could possibly not go then they are not going to be threats but um, that's why i'm saying so some of the further away pedestrians are sometimes also red but of course there are false positives and i will be discussing the false positive rates uh, shortly but this is the overall um, you know flow for the or end-to-end -end, uh, uh, outcome that that we are getting now let's get into the nitty-gritty as to um, how we are actually you know implementing each and every one of this so first the uh, the first things first is uh, the the first step like i mentioned it has to be object detection so for object detection we uh, implemented yolo v3 and what happens in, in yolo v3 again this is a you know poor lighting situation but it just detects objects every single you you put bounding boxes in and around every person so it's pedestrian with the probability of one uh, and it, it detects pedestrians as as, as as much as possible so even if you say you you go beyond 50 60 meters you know past this uh, you know intersection you can still see people you know coming at, at, a, at, at a distance so um, again there are ways to improve object detection in and around uh, uh, as you go further away if you use the feature pyramids but this uh, algorithm did not use feature pyramids as yet so this was the object detection part the next step was sort or real-time tracking um, 
end so this would be a good example of real-time tracking so here you see that each and every pedestrian now you don't just see it setting pedestrian uh, with you know prob probability something but you actually get pedestrian IDs so every single uh, you know pedestrian in within your sequence gets this unique ID you might ask why they are 33 34 and uh, and not 0 1 2 3 in each and every one of them because you are tracking them in and around each and every uh, sequence so uh, the the outcome is 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 giving you the, these numbers across different sequence that the you know the system has come across so that's why it's not always in, a, in any particular order uh, and, but again the, the same concept holds you see as soon as there is an occlusion you see that your sequence numbers will change and sometimes tracking across different frames is also hard for instance you see there are two people right but there are times where you see both of them are within one within one bounding box so that's why their uh, their tracking is definitely affected by it so um, this is actually uh, the, the limitations that we saw because of the object detector so if we had feature uh, pyramid networks or a, a, a more accurate object detector the performance of the sort would have even been better now um, so so far we did the, the object detection then we had the sort then we come to the uh, skeletal system fitting so skeletal system fitting is uh, in this case we took 17 key points uh, and out of the 17 key points nine were chosen in order to give good classification as to posture so you see these are the key points so um, that, that you form in order to then start detecting posture and these were just superimposed on top of the uh, on, on top of the uh, bounding boxes um, and and then finally Finally, you know we, we have the results uh, as are there in the paper so let me quickly talk about uh, some of the supplementary work so the supplementary material is also in, in the website what I wanted to mention is we, we work ex extensively on the JAD data set and the JAD data set does not really have a lot of nighttime sequences uh, but then in order to improve uh, predictions on nighttime sequences we actually implemented a day to night uh, style transfer uh, it, it's actually a style transfer it's a mix of style transfer and cycle GAN uh, in order to take daytime images and convert them to nighttime images and uh, what what we wanted to do was in order to get more training data to improve the the detections on on nighttime and we did see that if we train on nighttime images only the classification accuracy on nighttime images became better so beforehand you see um, these people were not being detected but now of course there's a false positive here at the back of the car uh, but the, at least you are getting some detection of, of pedestrians uh, but beforehand uh, the, the, the detections were not there at all uh, however we saw the overall detection did not improve so this this just shows that if you were to, to retrain um, you know day to night um, cycle GANs or in order to uh, you know train with more nighttime data you should have a separate model for daytime prediction and you should have a separate model for nighttime prediction so I thought this was one of uh, you know the, the cool aspects of, of the of the paper and now let's uh, get into the, the the final results so what we've done is we've actually uh, we've actually analyzed each and every uh, aspect so the uh, um, so the performance of the object detector then we've per, then we've actually looked at the performance of, of sort with respect to you know given uh, existing existing works and we've seen that for for different kind of sequences um, our performance is actually you know pretty state-of-the-art so it, it matches or it's even better than the state of the art then uh, we we did the skeletal fitting and finally uh, as as we mentioned we have even um, you know cross compared our um, you know dense net classifier with other classifiers such as random forest and again recurrent neural networks and again uh, our performance is is, uh, is actually always um, higher than the existing works uh, that are out there and finally we actually tried fusion and so if you go to the end-to-end -end aspect you will see a b c d so model b uh, is essentially uh, pedestrian intention detection with deep sort and then um, so c this is actually the the fusion model where what we do is you take the input you do your object detection uh, you do your you know real-time tracking and then you you put your uh, you know skeletal system on top of that and then you superimpose these skeletons on top of the images and then you do your your tracking right so uh, this becomes the outcome let me show you an outcome real quick so so this would be an example where you see uh, the the superimposed uh, 
skeletal system uh, on top of the pedestrian and this is really helping enhance uh, the, the detection so uh, this could have been been missed but now we are actually able to catch it and we start so the the, the system starts predicting this person as as it's as a threat before this person even starts moving so it's we've seen up to 0.5 seconds in advance uh, the, the bounding boxes corresponding to these uh, pedestrians who are a relative threat uh, turns red and that is exactly what we need so um, we have a lot of examples in the paper um, you know to go through for for the different uh, aspects and uh, the, the beauty of, of all of this is in the end we have demo code uh, which is in, in in Google Colab already hosted so for each and every model there are explanations there is how we even you know get started initialize everything and we you know run the model so it's actually fully benchmarkable each and every model the integrated models um, or the, the the simple base models by themselves so the code for each and every one of them on Colab is available on the website so we highly motivate and highly encourage people to try it out and and see if, if this helps uh, or not and now for for people who want to get into uh, you know posture or, or pose estimation, I will be providing uh, a, a, a free experiment that you can try out to have fun with experiments such as this. All right, so this is going to be relevant for anybody who is interested in getting into pose estimation or understanding uh, how this process actually works, how machine learning is actually helping with pose and expression, uh, you know, detection and prediction algorithms. So what you will need to do for this is uh, go to, uh, you know, open up a browser and just say Google AI experiments and the page that opens up this is the you know the, the first page and there you need to go and say start with one take you to the teachable machine home page we need to go to the post project and this is the project that I'm talking about so uh, I will be linking each and every one of them in the description box below but let's see what you can actually do with these so I, I will need to enable my webcam for this and let me do that. So this is again me in front of, of my web camera. So what I'll probably need to do is I need to first give it some sort of samples. So how supervised learning you know, works is you're supposed to give it some samples and it's gonna extrapolate your pose based off of that. So let me do some sitting poses and then let me do some standing poses and then see, uh, we're gonna train a model and preview what, what the model is telling us, okay? So let's do some of the sitting um, poses with, with expressions. Um, okay, so I think I have enough samples sitting down now. And let's add another uh, set of poses, but these would be standing up um, and you see every time I move around based off of uh, how I'm because I'm standing you will see more more stick figures and um, of course if I but I'm, I'm actually holding my, my mouse down so I can't really um, move way way more than this but here you can actually see how the stick figure is going across um, you know your body so and if I move away you'll see the stick figure for my other hand as well all right so I have enough samples so one I have captured samples uh, you know sitting down and some I have standing up so now I say I am going to be training my model. All right, so now we see the 50 box are done and you know, bat size and, and everything else is done. And um, now based off of, this is test day, okay? So whenever I'm, I'm going on talking, you see my sitting poses is going on saying that it's it's class one, so it's my, my sitting poses. If I do anything like this, um, you know, it, it, it's constantly saying that if, if I did something like this, I think it, it switched as a class 2. Here you see it, it's, it's not able to discern because my face is not visible. 
So if, if, if my face is covered, uh, I think with my hands, then that's where it goes bonkers because it, it doesn't really know uh, what to pick. But if I stand up and I do something like this, you know, you see it, it keeps saying that it's uh, class two because you, these are my standing poses. So pretty cool and trained, well-trained model. So I'm hoping you get motivated to create your own model now.